In the Son of Sam game, when there's a blackout, the killer strikes and a victim falls. If New York City and the Arconia fall under a blackout, will Bunny Folger's killer strike again? Who at the Arconia would be the killer's target? And how? And why? And why now? Let's solve Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 7, Flipping the Pieces. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Bunny Folger. I mean, really, at this point, do we have any idea? At the end of this podcast, we're going to keep switching it up. We're going to move your feedback up, and we're going to present another in our series of grand unifying theory on who killed Bunny. We did our first one on Howard. Stand by for who we're going to put in the spotlight this week. Spoilers for the first season of Only Murders in the Building and the first seven episodes of season two. If you haven't seen all 17 episodes, pause this video. You got to watch 17 episodes of television. You may need to down a gut buzz zero to stay awake, but do it. Then come back and join us on our hunt to learn who killed Bunny. This week in the double C credit clues, the opening credit double E Easter egg, our double P's, puzzle pieces, that's right. In the closing credits, in one puzzle piece, we see the Glitter Guy's photo of Charles and Lucy. In the other piece, we see the infamous number 14. Has anybody been doing screen captures of all these puzzle pieces? Can we put them together to solve a puzzle? Let's do it. Before we really dive into episode seven, flipping the pieces, let me give an apology for last week's thumbnail. Many people wrote to me and they were angry that if they saw our YouTube thumbnail covering episode six and they hadn't seen episode six yet, it did have a spoiler in it of what was going to end up happening in episode six. I apologize for that, guys. I was rushing to get out the door to catch a flight to go to the House of the Dragon world premiere, and I just picked an image and ran with it, and I kind of knew, yeah, this would be spoilery, but I just had to throw something up, and so I apologize. I promise it won't happen again. Speaking of the House of the Dragon premiere, you can check out our non-spoiler coverage on our podcast, The Joffrey of Podcast Feed. Search for The Joffrey of Podcast on all major podcast apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible. Subscribe. You'll hear our non-spoiler thoughts on the premiere. On YouTube, it's part of the main Double P content page. Give it a peek, give it a click, and as we all know by now, give it a like. We need likes. Turning back to Only Murders in the Building, be aware that television critics and other writers and people of that ilk got to see the first eight episodes of season two ahead of time. I have not. I assume if you're watching this podcast, you've not gotten a chance to see the first eight episodes of season two ahead of time. On social media, some of those same critics are saying they have now seen the final two episodes of season two. So be on alert for spoilers. But one thing we know, those television critics who wrote reviews of season two, who saw the first eight episodes early, They have implied in reviews that big things happen in next week's episode, episode 8. Big reveals are apparently going to happen in episode 8. The official Twitter account of Only Murders in the Building has been pushing a new website, whokilledbunny.com, where people can vote on who they think killed Bunny Folger. It should be noted that on this site, Who Killed Bunny, Nina's baby daddy, Jared, is not a suspect at all. So everybody who wants to claim Jared's the killer, and let's be honest, he looks like one, he's not on the list. Neither is Oscar. Now you would think Oscar being out of jail, he probably could get a job at Coney Island, but it's tough to tell. Are those hands Oscars? So that, to us, feels like it's time. It's time we've all got to declare who we think killed Bunny. So we need your theories, we need your best guess at who killed Bunny right now. Send them to us on social media at Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. You can send us an email to hello at Double P Media.com. And on YouTube, leave those comments. This is the week, everybody. We want everybody's best guess at the killer's identity. Drop them to us ASAP. Now, you guys know me. I think Howard's the killer. I've almost always thought Howard's the killer since this season began. I have no idea what Howard's connection to Bunny's final words of Savage and 14 could be, but I still think it's Howard. I would note that in this episode, in the last flashback to Bunny's death, Bunny doesn't say the word Savage or 14. Is it possible Bunny didn't say those two words? 
Is it possible the killer, the person in Mabel's apartment, said those words? What do you guys think? If I had to pick a couple other options, I would currently have Superfan Marv in my second position, and my third choice would be Lucy. And guess what, guys? At the end of this podcast, our latest grand unifying theory will have Lucy as the focus of our investigation. Last week, we talked about fan casting. We talked about who would you want to play Lucy's mom on Only Murders in the Building. Helen wrote, Laura Dern would be a great choice for Charles's ex. Diane said, hey, what about Marissa Tomei? But then, of course, JT said, what about Marissa Tomei for Mabel's aunt? And then Charlize Theron for Lucy's mom. Other choices for Mabel's aunt, we had Ronnie wrote, I would love Salma Hayek if she was Mabel's aunt. She seems like a glamorous jet-setting type to let Mabel crash at her apartment, but also maybe know some secrets. Nathan wrote, I would love to see Sofia Vergara or Eva Longoria as Mabel's aunt. And Daniel wrote, Selena's aunt should be J-Lo. She's just Mabel from the block. And you would not believe this. We also got a bit of feedback from David, who said, well, I have an actor who could play Mabel's dad. What about Ray Romano? He would be a good one. Well, it wasn't Ray Romano. Mabel's dad, ah, oh, what a tragedy. Lots of tragedy in Mabel's past. Let's come up with another question for this week, because you guys are so good. In the past, we came up with a ship name for Mabel and Alice, and I think you guys selected Malice as their ship name. Well, do we need a new ship name for Mabel and Theo? Do you like the ship name Mayo? I gotta be honest, I, on all my sandwiches and burgers, I say, hold the Mayo, but could Mayo be their ship name? Or do you prefer Thebel? What do you think? Mayo, Thebel, what should be the ship name for Mabel and Theo? Do you have your own suggestion? Send them to us at Double BHQ or leave them in the YouTube comments. We can't wait to see them. Before we run down our list of suspects, let's look at what episode seven taught us about our victim, Arconia board president, Bunny Folger. The big thing I think about Bunny this week is a line that Oliver says. He says, you'll do anything if you think it'll help your kid. Is that the killer's motive? They'll do anything, including kill Bunny, if it'll help their kid? Hmm, what do you guys think? All this time we've been so focused on Boot Watch that we haven't been looking at something else. Darcy gave us some feedback where Darcy wrote, Remember, the murderer grabbed Bunny with black gloves. Ooh, so now we have Boot Watch, Glove Watch. We also may have Hand and Thumb Watch. Ooh, we're going to have to find this killer. We ask for these each week. We mean it each week. If you're watching on YouTube, we really need you to subscribe, like, and comment. You don't have to do it in that order. You can comment, then like, then subscribe. YouTube algorithms are tough to tackle. And as we love those people who just write comments to say, I'm writing a comment, give us your best. I'm just writing a comment, comment down in YouTube. We'll love it. Let's look at the suspects. Cinda Canning. Miller wrote in about the infamous iPhone theory. So, Miller wrote, I remember something I read a while ago about the company Apple not letting killers or villains have Apple products. Is Cinda the killer? She doesn't have an iPhone. So many people love this phone theory. Alice has been using an iPhone. Does that mean she's good? Cinda doesn't have an iPhone. Does that mean she killed somebody? We're going to need a bit more evidence. But Mila and a couple other people have been pointing this out in the feedback column, so I love to get it out there. Peaceful Ganja gave us this bit of feedback where they wrote, I bet it's Cindy Canning that's texting them. She was right there in the Arconia courtyard at the end of season one where the trio were being arrested. Poppy did say that Cinda would do anything for a good story. Jenny asks, who would wear clothing that fully covers their whole body? Then Jenny answers, people who don't want to be recognized in the general public. Criminals, somebody with something to hide, celebrities. Aha, Cinda probably has another someone on her payroll who works at the NYPD to give her tips, which explains why she was outside in the courtyard on the night that Bunny died. She must have had a heads up from the text. Hmm, a lot of people don't trust Cinda. Cinda did not appear in this episode in the real life of the show, has only appeared in one episode. She did appear in People's Visions and Dreams back in episode two. Ivan the Waiter was also not in this episode. But let's talk about our mystery masked person. Would a waiter need a second job at Coney Island? We know so little about Ivan, but look at this graffiti on the wall at Coney Island. Is that Ivan written in graffiti? 
What if we flip the piece? Is that Ivan written in graffiti on the door there in Coney Island? What do you guys think? Is Ivan involved? Marv. Now, Marv is an interesting member of the superfans. He knows about the secret passageway. He has a daughter. So when we heard earlier Oliver's infamous line where Oliver said, parents will do anything if they think it'll help their kid. If Marv's daughter is Alice, is that the thing he's doing to help his kid? Get his kid this painting, this forgery of the Rose Cooper painting? What do you guys think about Marv? He at least has the right build, and with color grading on film, it's a bit tricky to tell. But these hands do look like Caucasian hands. Could Marv be the masked man? Would you need two jobs to live in New York City, such as mold removal and working at Coney Island, to be able to afford the five boroughs? Howard Morris, my number one suspect, but boy, there haven't been a lot of clues recently to point to Howard. Now, somebody else pointed out that Mrs. Gambolini, it could be an anagram for blaming Morris. Now, the trick about this is it'd be blaming Morris with only one R in the word Morris. Eh, we still don't really know how Howard got his black eye. There's always the rule of threes. We first heard it was from playing with his cat. Well, it's not that. We then heard it was from Nina punching him in the eye. It's probably not that. Will we find out the real reason, the third reason why Howard has a black eye? He's still my number one suspect, but what do you guys think? Teddy Demas. Boy, this is just full of characters who weren't in this episode. Though I suppose you could say Teddy did call his son Theo, and so tangentially, Teddy was in this episode. Before we even look at Bunny's murder, I want to point out that there is a chance that Teddy fooled around with Oliver's wife, Roberta, before Oliver and Roberta were married. So it's possible that once Roberta married Oliver, she didn't cheat on him, but she had fooled around before they were married. Now, of course, in that case, it would still be terrible that they never told Oliver the truth about Will, but that could be better than cheating with a married woman. I want to put together some of the pieces that we've been talking about here on the podcast about Teddy Demas. Remember in season one, Tim Kono was on the hunt for Angel, a black market jewelry dealer. That black market jewelry dealer was Teddy Demas, a.k.a. Angel is Teddy Demas. And that name Angel comes from Teddy's grandmother, his Yaya, Evangelia, who escaped the Greek and Armenian Holocaust. Angel is in the middle of the name Evangelia. So we focused on Angel. Now let's think about Bunny's final words. We mentioned on the podcast that her final words were not 14 and savage, but her words were 14, 14. She was either repeating the word 14 or she was saying 14, 14. As we mentioned on that previous podcast, just Google the number 14, 14 and you'll get the result angel number 14, 14. So another tie possibly to angel. Of course, this season, we also got the song angel in flip flops. Is the only murders in the building team trying to point us to Angel, a.k.a. Teddy Demas? Now, you may be wondering, well, why would Teddy kill Bunny? I've got no idea. But we do have those pieces out there. And as we saw in this episode, you can have an ankle monitor, but you can go a lot of places in New York City, apparently, under house arrest. Theo Demas. How do you guys feel about the redemption of Theo? And this isn't, once again, tied to Bunny's murder so much, but how do you feel about it? Theo did kill Zoe, either accidentally or on purpose, he can't even remember. And Theo did participate in letting Oscar rot in jail for a decade and blackmailing Tim Kono. Theo worked with his father to steal jewelry from dead people. Those are pretty tough things, Theo. Now, he is haunted by Zoe's death, but is that enough to cover for his various crimes? What do you guys think? Let me know. Theo, at least, let's give him some credit, he understands his behavior. He was a bit creepy by taking zoned out Mabel back to his place. I mentioned that Theo has got this ankle monitor. We assume he's under some sort of house arrest, but he can go to the Arconian back. He can move around the city pretty easily. He can take the subway. He can drive a car all the way out to Coney Island. Theo commits even more crimes in this episode. He knows how to break into locked doors. He doesn't have a problem with stealing people's personal files. Let's go, Theo. Alice Banks, another character who wasn't in this episode, and the painting really hasn't gotten mentioned much since the beginning of season two. JT gave us this bit of feedback. 
He said, it just occurred to me, how did Alice know what bunny was wearing the night she was killed? And what he's talking about is at the end of episode six, there's a bunny down on the ground being killed in Alice's art exhibit who's dressed correctly. JT writes, even if the press had pictures of the murder scene, the body would typically be covered. Bunny only received the tie-dye hoodie shortly before her murder, so no one has seen her wearing one before. Unless Mabel described the scene to her, Alice couldn't have known. I think Alice was there. Ooh. Lucy was in the episode, She's All Alone at Charles's Place. She didn't tell Charles she was going there, she's just there during the blackout. Is Lucy in danger with the masked man having a picture of Lucy? Or is that telling us to focus on Lucy? Somebody's watching Lucy because they don't trust her. Detective Kreps. He's got a bad reputation, according to Cinda Canning. Could Detective Kreps be the masked glitter guy? Well, if we look at this hand and assume the masked guy is white, at least Detective Kreps fits that bill. Could he be using the podcast trio to get evidence and help fix his bad reputation? Again, that wouldn't mean he was the killer, would it? You might also wonder... Would a New York City detective, not a cop walking a beat, but a New York City detective, actually need a second job at Coney Island? The episode is titled Flipping the Pieces. If you flip Kreps, you get Spurk. In the big three, we found out from Oliver that his son Will's play of The Wizard of Oz went wonderfully. Charles, I don't know if we learned much about Charles this episode, but Mabel, we learned a whole lot. Mabel would do puzzles with her father, and he'd turn over the pieces and make her solve the puzzle just from the shapes. Ooh, that is difficult. Mabel and her father would watch X-Files episodes together. So great. But as he got sicker and sicker from stomach cancer, he couldn't do things with her like go trick-or-treating, and he died when she was seven. Now, as crazy as this is to think, remember, memory includes objective and subjective memories. Is Mabel remembering her father's death correctly? Only Murders in the Building has introduced soap opera plots like who is Will's real father. Could they introduce another soap opera plot about is Mabel's father still alive? Crazy? What do you guys think? Before we go to your feedback, Random Human 19 gave us some feedback where they wrote, I find it interesting that so many are liking this season more than season one. I'm watching, but not too happy. It just feels like season two, there's very little focus on solving the murder and us getting clues and information to be able to apply. Now, Random Human goes on to write, I also see Selena Gomez has a makeup line. How did Mabel lean miss that opportunity? Well, that's Random Human 19's thought. What do you guys think? Which season do you like more? Do you like season one of Only Murders in the Building? Or do you prefer season two? Now let's move to feedback. And remember, we're going to end this podcast with our grand unifying theory about Lucy. The first bit of feedback is an email. And you can email us via hello at doublepmedia.com. That's hello at doublepmedia.com. Gabriella sent us this email where she said, Rose Cooper, a.k.a. Lenora, shows up to reclaim her painting since she's afraid that Bunny is retiring and moving to Boca and that she may never see the painting again. When she shows up, Bunny's dead and the real painting is gonzo. Ooh, what do you guys think of that theory? Last season, Detective Williams told us we needed to focus on the who, the how, the why, and the why now. And Gabriella right then shows a possible why now. The painting could have been going to Boca Raton, and the killer may have had to move now to get it while they still could. On YouTube, Crystal Art West wrote, I think three people were there the night Bunny died. An attacker, a killer, and a witness. Matt H. goes one better. He says, imagine it's six people. Bunny's attacker, one. Bunny's killer, two. The catacomb mass person, three. The glitter bomb person, four the painting thief five, and the evidence planner six. Man, thank goodness that Arconia has so many apartments. We're going to have a lot of suspects, Matt. Michael wrote, Clues to ponder. The knife was used in a production of Macbeth, which is another murder mystery involving family dynamics and greed and lust for power. But we don't know if the blood on the knife is bunnies or not. Good point, Michael. Thomas wrote, You noted that Abel found a black wig in Lenora's bag. In episode 6, we see Alice wearing a black wig to look more like Mabel. Could it be the same one? Hmm. 
D wrote, For me, whoever committed this crime is trying to obviously set up Mabel, Charles, and Oliver. And that is a huge clue. Who would want them gone and why? Personally, I think who would want them gone the most would be Cinda from the other podcast. That's an interesting thought, D. Not only does she need to kill Bunny to get a new podcast subject, she's also got to get rid of her competition. She's got to have all those Patreon dollars for herself. Rebecca wrote, The newest episode with Mabel on the subway, where she has memory loss, and then back in the very first episode of the first season, it has Rebecca thinking, what if Mabel found Bunny stabbed with a knife in her apartment, and then kind of zoned out and put the needle into Bunny herself? Obviously, Mabel has some issues, Rebecca writes. Ooh, well, that's tough. (laughs) I love this one, even though I can't pronounce your name. I apologize. It looks like it's pronounced Pepe Nicolau. But they wrote, what if Savage is actually Sandwich and it's pointing to Ivan? Oh, man. Now that is a great one. Love it. Kim wrote, off topic, but I'm still hoping for Tim Kono to be redeemed. Leaving your friend to rot in jail for 10 years because you were threatened doesn't work for me. If you were afraid initially, which would be understandable, you wouldn't stay scared for 10 years, would you? And wouldn't you move? If you were afraid for Mabel, then you wouldn't lose touch with her for 10 years. Well, Kim, how are we going to redeem Tim Kono? you got some great points here. Listeners, what do you think? Does Tim Kono need to be redeemed? Write to us. Write in the comments. Let us know. Now, this is a thought I had myself, but haven't mentioned on the podcast yet. But a user with the handle An Anonymous Idiot wrote, What if Bunny wasn't saying the name of her killer, but of another person who needs saving? She was trying to get Mabel to go to Savage because she was afraid the killer would come for Charles. Lisa wrote, my theory stands. I believe Bunny's death was accidental. I think she was not the real target, but Mabel was. Oh, Lisa, I came up with a similar idea when I presented my Howard grand unifying theory. You'll have to listen when I talk about Lucy in a bit, if I think her target was Mabel as well. We got a comment from Lauren, who may have provided a great answer to a question we put in our last podcast. Lauren wrote, The possible reason Ivan had Bunny's address could be simply because Bunny might have ordered takeout food from the restaurant in the past. It's a New York City diner. Brilliant idea, Lauren. All right, let's dive into a grand unifying theory about Lucy. And this theory is going to take more assumptions and guesses than I normally would in a grand unifying theory, because there aren't really many true clues that point to Lucy. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the first one that I think you have to do to have this theory work. Charles, in season one, explains how Lucy came into his life and then left his life. He says he met Lucy's mom, Emma, on a vacation in Iceland. Emma and he hit it off, and then Emma and her seven-year-old daughter, Lucy, moved into his apartment in the Arconia. Charles tried to create some stability in Lucy's life, such as making her omelets every morning. Charles claims Lucy loves it, but that his ex, her mom, Emma, didn't. Charles booked a cruise, which he says Emma thought was going to be a romantic trip for two, but the cruise Charles has booked was a family fun cruise meant for Lucy to come as well. One day, Emma dragged Lucy on an excursion, but really what happened was Emma grabbed Lucy and flew home and abandoned Charles and left him on the cruise ship. Charles says Emma thought a hard break would be best for Lucy, so he didn't try to reach out and talk to her again. Now, the way Charles tells this story, and he's telling it to Jan, the audience is meant to assume that Emma left Charles because she didn't want to be romantically involved with him anymore. That's what we assume based on the way Charles tells this story. But note, that is an assumption. We don't really know why Emma grabbed Lucy and flew away from Charles and the cruise. This could be a classic misdirect, the kind of misdirect that murder mystery writers like Agatha Christie used all the time. If Agatha Christie was writing this tale, she'd have the reader assume Emma left because she didn't like Charles anymore and wanted to find another man, when she actually would have left Charles because her mentally unstable daughter Lucy was growing too close and too attached to her new boyfriend. Emma left not because she wanted to get away from Charles, but she wanted to get Lucy away from Charles for Charles' safety. That's why she didn't like Charles being so involved in Lucy's life and making her omelets every morning and things like that. Lucy, in this world, is mentally unstable. She's somebody who's grown up with multiple father figures throughout the years. 
And finally, she thought she had one in Charles, who was so close to her, the closest one she had of all these five father figures. But then Charles, the one she's closest to, becomes the worst. He had a tight connection with her, but he hasn't been answering her calls or letters. What kind of person does that? What kind of evil SOB does that? Suddenly she hears Charles has a podcast, and he's not miserable without her in his life. Instead, he's having fun with two new friends, Oliver and Mabel. This is ridiculous. Oh, suddenly he's the toast of the town, and he does start returning her calls. But let's be honest. After all these years, what does that mean? Is this another fake-out, another false alert for a father figure? Lucy has a plan. He's burned her, now she'll burn him. From her years of exploring the Arconia secret passageways, she knows that Bunny has this painting that says Savage on the back of it, and it looks like Charles in the painting. She writes Bunny a note asking for the painting. Look at how her card to Charles, the handwriting on it, now look in the card that Bunny got which demanded the painting. But Bunny won't give up the painting. Lucy decides, you know what? I'll just get it. She breaks in and she threatens Bunny with the painting. But wait, I can't just do that. I can't just take out Charles. But I got to take out these interlopers in Charles's life too. I'll use a knife from Oliver's place and I'll frame Mabel as well based on what she said on the podcast. Lucy seems to have been stealing clothes. Look at this hat she's wearing. Doesn't that look like an older lady's hat? When she first meets Mabel... Mabel says to her, I like your pants. I had a pair of those before she's cut off by Charles. Isn't it likely that Lucy stole Mabel's pants and is wearing clothes? Look at these clothes in this episode from People in the Arconia. Lucy comes to the Arconia, goes straight to Oliver's floor. Oliver never locks his door so she can just go in and grab a knife. She throws it in her bag. She rides the elevator up to Mabel and Bunny's floor. She's going to get off and take care of them. When suddenly she sees Charles get off the elevator, Oh, drats, I didn't mean to run into him. She can't let him know she's there because she has plans to get that painting and to rid herself of these bastards. She rides the elevator up to Charles's place. She's got her big bag of evidence to plant. She lets herself in with the key that she confirmed still worked. She goes to the secret passage and she plans to sneak down to Bunny's apartment when she runs into Marv working on mold removal. It scares her to death. But she can't dare mention this to Charles because what she plans to do. And she does do it. She goes in to get the painting. And what happens? She kills Bunny. Bunny's dying words are savage based on who she thinks this kid is. This kid is related to Charles Savage. And 14, the age she assumes Lucy is. The podcast trio are arrested. Lucy is so happy. But wait, they're suddenly released. Lucy can't have that happen. So she starts planning more evidence, such as the Rose Cooper painting in Charles' apartment, the knife in Charles' apartment. She wanted a father figure, tying into the theme of the season about fathers and family. We had to do a lot of assuming, but that's our current grand unified theory on Lucy. What do you guys think? You know what I'm going to ask you to do. Write down in the comments on YouTube. Reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com. Double PHQ, the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, double PHQ. Send us an email, hello at double PHQ. That's our theory. What do you think? We'll talk next week.